Act Three of Charlie's Aunt by Brandon Thomas. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three Dinner Lubricates Business. Boswell's Johnson. Scene Drawing Room, Spedigue's House. Three large French windows opening into garden center. Large double doors right to open off stage. Fireplace left. Door down left below fireplace. Upright piano left center with screw piano stool, revolving stool. Bookcase and china cabinet right and left. Small bureau upright. Down right center, clover-shaped ottoman with center pillar, Victorian redan. Single chair down right below doors. Single chair between each of the sets of French windows, center. Gas chandelier, or gas brackets on walls. Oil lamp on the bureau, oil standard lamp by piano. Old-fashioned portraits on walls, flowers in bowls, cushions, etc. Victorian sofa below piano left, with cushions. Victorian window curtains and velvet overmantel, typically Victorian. Curtain over door down left, looped up in Victorian manner. The room to be a comfortable sitting room in a house in North Oxford. But as it is owned by a man of sixty, the furniture is obviously round about 1850. Lights half down inside scene. Full up when lamp is on. Moonlight streams into room diagonally right to left. Alternate green and blue in batten on cloth outside. Orchestra plays first sixteen bars of the Eaton Boating Song. As the curtain starts to rise, the next fifteen bars are played softly, till they fade out. Brasset discovered with taper lighting candles. Laughter off right. Brasset listens at door right. There they go. Dinner's pretty well over now, and they'll all be in here soon enough. Turning up oil standard lamp up right. Fancy old Spedigue getting me to come here tonight and butler for him. Turning up oil lamp up left. I suppose he's too mean to have a butler of his own. Well, all I can say is, it's simply marvelous the way his lordship's kept it up. He's played the perfect lady something wonderful. Loud laughter and talking off left. Hello, what's up now? Listens as before. Voices stop. Anyhow, if the worst comes to the worst, I've got his lordship's dress clothes with me. Enter Lord Fancourt quickly, right. Blast it! Get me a fly, quick. I'm going home. Goes up center. Enter Charlie and Jack. Quickly catch Lord Fancourt and bring him struggling down center. Jack left of him, Charlie right. Brasset exits right, closing doors. You've been going along all right if you'd only paid more attention to old Spettigue. Why did you bolt from the dinner table like that? It's so awfully dangerous and unkind of you, you know. Instead of behaving in a dignified manner as Charlie's aunt, here you are going on like some disgraceful old... old... Oh, go on. Finish it. Hands folded as old lady. Don't spare me. As a man again. You can't say I'm drunk, anyhow. Or if I am, it's for the want of it. Now look here, perhaps this game won't do. Think of the girls and the solemn promise you gave to help us. For their sakes. Yes, but she wasn't here then. She? Who? The little girl. What little girl? Miss Dunahay. What, the girl with Mrs... What's her name, Smythe? Yes, Mrs. Butterscott Smythe's niece. Charlie goes to window right. Well, what of her? Why, she's the little girl I met at Monte Carlo, and this Butterscotch woman is the woman who took her away. And I'm off. Bolts up center. Stop him, Charlie, quick. Charlie turns, stops him, and brings him down center. Charlie goes to door right. Oh, you've got us into this deuce of a mess. Well, of all the beastly, ungrateful things to say. What difference can it make to you now? Why, I want to talk to her. Talk to her? What about? I want to tell her what you fellows have been telling your girls. Hang it! I'm just as much in love as you are. Charlie, near door right. Jack, they'll hear everything. Was there ever such an idiot? 
turns away in disgust. Lord Fancourt loudly. No, there never was. Look at me. I'm a disgrace to my sex. Turns and goes up centre. Well, if the worst comes to the worst, we'll take the bull by the horns and be done with him. Lord Fancourt turning, coming down centre, viciously. You can take the bull by the tail for all I care. And what's more, you can tell those confounded girls of yours to leave off kissing me before her. I won't stand it. Don't shout, you idiot! To Charlie. We'll make some excuse. Say she's ill. Uh, put him in a fly and be done with him. Lord Fancourt goes upright to Charlie, venomously. And Charlie, you can make some excuse to Miss Verdun for me. Jack, jealously going to Lord Fancourt upright centre. Miss Verdun? What have you got to say to Miss Verdun? Come, out with it. Haven't I promised to get old Spettigew's consent in writing, you idiot? You're as helpless as a couple of babies. You want your mothers with you. Makes off up left centre. Voices heard off right. This way, madam. They are coming. Jack, dragging Lord Fancourt back, pushing him on to Ottoman right centre. Here, sit down, quick. Voices off right. The boys sit. Charlie right of Lord Fancourt, Jack left of him. Brasset entering doors right, showing in ladies. Enter Donna Lucia and Ella, right, in full evening dress, carrying long white suede kid gloves. Donna Lucia carries a fan. Ella smelling salts. All three men rise, but Charlie pushes Lord Fancourt down again. Exit Brasset, right. Donna Lucia, crossing behind Ottoman to center. How is your aunt, Mr. Wycombe? We were afraid she might be ill. Ella, following Donna Lucia to right center between Jack and Donna Lucia. Yes, is there anything the matter? Er, uh, aunt has been a little upset by the, by the heat of a dining room, and that's all. The heat? I found it rather cold. Yes, Charlie means that. Cold. You see, uh, uh, Donna Lucia has lived so long in a warm climate. Donna Lucia turns away to hide her amusement and sits right end of Chesterfield, down left. Ella, giving Jack Donna Lucia's smelling salts. Won't you try Auntie's smelling salts? They're so good. Lord Fancourt stares studiedly at Ella. Thank you. Ella crosses behind Chesterfield and sits left of Donna Lucia. She's often like this, isn't she, Charlie? Jack shoves smelling salt bottle under Lord Fancourt's nose. Lord Fancourt sneezes with violence of the smelling salts. Enter Amy, followed by Kitty, right. Kitty shuts door and joins Amy, center. Amy, coming to center. I hope Donna Lucia is all right. Kitty, right center. Yes, is she? Between Jack and Amy. Oh, yes. Mr. Chesney says she is all right now. Kitty to Jack. We'll go and tell Mr. Spettigew, he's most anxious, and leave her with us. Takes smelling salts from Jack and goes up to French windows placing salts on table right, then stands in the moonlight on the terrace. Yes, we'll look after her now. Joins Kitty up center, on terrace by window center. Exeunt Jack and Charlie right, after shaking fists at Lord Fancourt in a warning manner. Lord Fancourt, seeing Jack and Charlie going. I say, you fellows, don't leave me like this. Aside. Here's a deuce of a position. Looking towards ladies. I wonder what they'll talk about. I hope they'll be careful before me. Enter Brasset right with coffee, cream, and sugar. Ella to Donna Lucia. I wonder who she really is, Auntie. Oh, some old thing they got after receiving my telegram. Brasset offers coffee to Donna Lucia, which she accepts. Ella shakes her head in refusal. Brasset then goes to Kitty and Amy, center. Each take a cup. Ella, after Brasset moves away, Say something to her, Auntie. I like to hear her talk. I would, my dear, but look at her. If I thought they intended that to be like me, I'd never forgive them. Brasset crosses to Donna Lucia and Ella. Both refuse cream. He goes straight to Kitty and Amy, upright. Loud laughter, off right. Lord Fancourt, aside. 
Hark at the silly fools. Brassett comes down right of Lord Fancourt with coffee. They look at each other and smile. I say, Brassett, what's the story? Lord Fancourt looks alarmed. Lord Fancourt aside in terror. That's just what I expected. That Don Pedro was very fond of telling. Lord Fancourt aside in terror. I must put a stop to this. Aloud. Well, one of the young ladies play something, please. Donna Lucia to Ella. How rude of her to interrupt like that. Oh, she couldn't have heard you, Auntie. Oh, do tell us, Mrs. Beverly Smythe. Yes, anything about Don Pedro would be is so interesting. Do tell us. But perhaps Donna Lucia would prefer to tell Don Pedro's story herself. Don Pedro? Donna Lucia, mischievously. Your late husband, you know. Don Pedro d'Alvadores. Oh, yes, of course. I know his name, <laughs> but I don't remember his stories. I don't hold with such frivolity. Aside. It's too bad of those fellows. Ella, aside to Donna Lucia. Auntie, don't tease her so. Tell the story yourself. Well, Don Pedro, who was the kindest soul in all the world, but... To Lord Fancourt. Will Donna Lucia give me permission? Kitty, crossing to left of Lord Fancourt. Oh, you won't mind Mrs. Beverly Smythe telling the story, will you? Amy, crossing to right of Lord Fancourt. And you'll listen, won't you? Lord Fancourt, resignedly. Well, if I must, I must. Turning towards Donna Lucia, Kitty arranges cushions for him. Well, as I said before, Don Pedro, who was the kindest soul in all the world, once found one of his cellarmen. Lord Fancourt looks uneasy. Tipsy very tipsy tut tut so don pedro whom the man did not recognize why was don pedro tipsy no no the man donna lucia the, the man, man was tipsy. tipsy don pedro was of course most abstemious that is what makes the point of the story oh does it so don pedro said to the man what would don pedro say if he saw you like this tipsy like this yes, yes yes and what did the man say the man said <laughs> and that's where it's so funny oh <laughs> is that where we laugh no, no no the man said oh that's all right don pedro's often like this lord fancourt blankly tipsy <laughs> yes general laughter except lord fancourt amy and kitty go up center lord fancourt aside surprised well of all the damn silly stories suddenly collapses with laughter to donna lucia oh, 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 what was the man's name oh, really i don't know the man's name oh that's a pity donna lucia getting her own back but don't you remember this story? It was a favourite one of Don Pedro's. Oh, perfectly. I shrieked when I heard it first. Forgetting himself, pulling up knees of trousers through his skirt. I say, that reminds me of a very funny story. I... Kitty and Amy come down left of Lord Fancourt. They must not see trouser business. Both turn to Lord Fancourt on the words, funny story. Lord Fancourt sees girls recollecting himself won't one of the young ladies play something please kitty center oh i'm so out of practice you sing something amy amy between lord fancourt and kitty oh i can't i know nothing new sing that charming little ballad ta ra ra boom gay i'm afraid i can't donna lucia donna lucia to lord fancourt won't you sing something for us, Donna Lucia? Me? Yes, one of those charming little Brazilian songs I've heard Don Pedro was so fond of. Oh, <laughs> no, 
I haven't sung since I had the measles. Kitty turns up stage to hide laughter. Amy joins her. Donna Lucia aside to Ella. What? Over forty years ago. Donna Lucia aside to Ella. Another libel. I was the merest infant. But I play a little. Kitty gets a music stool ready for Lord Fancourt to sit on and remains standing above piano. Amy goes right center. Lord Fancourt rising, aside. That's a good idea. I shan't have to talk, and I can drown their conversation. Crossing towards piano center. Donna Lucia to Lord Fancourt as he is crossing center. I hope you've quite recovered from the shock my niece gave you today. Oh, yes. I was a little upset, wasn't I? I suffer so much from giddiness. Were you ever giddy? Donna Lucia, mock indignantly. Never. I was. Going up to piano. What shall I play? A little Beethoven or Blue Bells of Scotland? Lord Fancourt plays five-finger exercise C to G and back, then quickly strikes B twice, two octaves higher. Do you know that? Then starts to play something softly. If the actor who plays Lord Fancourt cannot play the piano, he can play chopsticks here. After a bar or two of music, Spedigue off right. Come along, my dear friends, come along. Kitty, aside to Lord Fancourt while he is playing. Here they are. Now don't forget the letter. Oh no, I won't forget. Kitty going to Amy upright centre. Let's get them all out into the garden and leave her alone with Mr. Spettigue. Enter Spettigue, Sir Francis, Jack and Charlie, all in full evening dress, followed by Brasset, also evening dress. He stands by door with empty tray. Spettigue comes down centre, stands as though entranced by music. Jack stands left of Charlie down right centre by Ottoman. Sir Francis joins Kitty and Amy up right center. Brasset takes two empty cups from small table up right center. Spedigue, during last four bars of music, moves to Lord Fancourt center. Charming, charming. Lord Fancourt stops playing, twirls round on stool and almost overbalances. Spedigue saves him from falling. Then Lord Fancourt sits staring at Ella on sofa left. Bring the cigars, Brasset, unless the ladies... To Donna Lucia. Miss Beverly Smith? To Lord Fancourt. Donna Lucia, do you object to... Lord Fancourt, without thinking, using deep voice. Smoking? Oh no, I like it. Pulling himself up and using lighter voice. It kills the insects and things. Sits staring at Ella again. Exit Brasset, right. Charlie, down right. Look at him, Jack. What's he doing? Staring at her like he did all through dinner. The fool! Brasset re-enters right with cigars, cigar cutters, matches on salver. He places them on table up right center and exits right with salver. Spedigue center aside. I must make an opportunity to see her alone. Aloud. It's a sweet evening. Perhaps some of you may care to enjoy a cigar in the garden. No, thank you, sir. It's a sweet evening. Goes up center, stands behind piano. Sir Francis, with back to audience, up right center, facing girls. You've been enjoying yourselves capitally, Miss Verdun. We heard the music. Kitty to Sir Francis. Yes, Donna Lucia has been playing for us. Spedigue, leaning over piano, to Lord Fancourt. How charming of you, Donna Lucia. To Charlie. What should we have done without your dear aunt, Charlie? Charlie, in hollow tone. Uh... Jack, aside to Charlie. Don't groan like that, you idiot. Going center to right of Lord Fancourt. Are you fond of music, Mr. Spettigue? Charlie joins Amy, upright center. Spettigue to Lord Fancourt, with a look. I... I hope to be. Lord Fancourt puts his hand on top of piano. Spedigue covers it with his own. Lord Fancourt, drawing hand away, slaps Spedigue's hand with it. Why? Are you going to take lessons? Spedigue goes behind Satie down left and talks to Donna Lucia and Ella. Lord Fancourt aside to Jack. What's he looking at me like that for? Like a boiled owl? 
Jack, taking Sir Francis's left arm and bringing him down centre. Dad, I'm glad you know about Kitty now. She's a splendid girl, isn't she? Kitty crosses to Lord Fancourt. I like her very much, I must say, Jack. You've taken a load off my mind, Dad. I thought I was quite without means. Not altogether, my boy. And you've thought this matter well over? Night and day, Dad, ever since I first met her. Charlie goes down right. It's a serious step, you know. Going down right with Jack. A serious step. Jack joins Charlie down right. Kitty at piano to Lord Fancourt. Now don't forget, in writing. Goes to Amy, aside. Amy, let's get them all out into the garden. You take Charlie. Goes down right to Jack. Jack aside right to Charlie. I'm glad I told the dad now. Sir Francis joins Amy upright. Spedigue joins Lord Fancourt above piano. Kitty sits on ottoman. Jack stands right of her. Charlie joins Amy upright center. Spedigue, leaning across piano, to Lord Fancourt. But why won't you listen to reason? Of course I'll listen to reason. But where is the letter? Spedigue recollecting, but without interest. Ah, uh, I remember. I've not written it yet. Not yet. Swings round on revolving stool to write, ending back to audience. Sir Francis goes to French window center and looks off. Spedigue, spoonily. We must find an opportunity to talk it over, alone. That will be nice. Swings back again left, turns, ending facing Spedigue, each a three-quarter turn. Spedigue and Lord Fancourt continue talking together. Sir Francis crosses and stands behind piano up left. Amy to Charlie, upstage center. But Charlie, why are you so depressing? We ought to be very happy today. Amy, great joys sometimes bring a sort of reaction. I, I shall be better tomorrow. With a look at Lord Fancourt. Oh, come into the garden. Exeunt Charlie and Amy, right center, window to right. Spedigue crosses the table up right center. Ella goes up behind piano to window center. Lord Fancourt watching her. She turns and smiles to him, and exits immediately off center to left. Sir Francis drops down left behind sofa to Donna Lucia. Jack aside to Kitty. I've told the dad blank out, and he's delighted. But Kitty, you won't regret turning you back on society and the row and... and and the stifling hollowness of my own Monday and everybody else's rest of the week, and have something real to think about? Jack, the vista is too heavenly. Rises. Come into the garden. Jack and Kitty go up center. Spedigue upright to Jack. It's a sweet evening. Perhaps you'd like a cigar, Jack. Offer cigar to Jack. No, thank you, sir. It's a sweet evening. Exeunt Jack and Kitty center, window to right. Spedigue goes down right. Lord Fancourt starts to play again softly. Note, Lord Fancourt to play here only if he plays well. Nothing should be played to get a laugh or to guy Sir Francis and Donna Lucia's exit. Sir Francis, going right of sofa. Shall we join them? Yes, it's a charity to leave those two people alone. Indeed, why? Donna Lucia, rising. Oh, only a little matchmaking mischief, that's all. Sir Francis, following Donna Lucia, between her and Lord Fancourt at piano. On Spedigue's account? Donna Lucia, slyly. No, on Donna Lucia's. Donna Lucia and Sir Francis exeunt window center to left. Spedigue goes to window, watches them off. Lord Fancourt rises and hides behind piano. They've gone. Turns, finds Lord Fancourt gone. Lucia! Coming down center. They've gone. Spedigue looks about, astonished. Goes towards door right. Lord Fancourt strikes top note sharply on piano, and retires quickly. Spedigue turns. Lord Fancourt bobs up from behind piano. Lord Fancourt points playfully at Spedigue. Aha! Spedigue sees Lord Fancourt. Ah, there you are. Lucia, how I have longed for this moment. Comes to center of piano. 
Lord Fancourt, behind piano, treble end, aside. Oh, he's at it again. Goes upstage to bass. Lucia, I must speak to you. No, I am very angry with you. Puts hand on top of piano. Lucia, you wound me. Don't say that. Moves to bass. Pats Lord Fancourt's hand. Lord Fancourt snatches it away. Lord Fancourt dodges to treble. But I do say that. After the promise you made me. To treat to me like this. Unconsciously puts hand on piano top again. Promise? The consent you promised in writing. Spedigue going to treble. Lucia, how can you? Well, we have so much to say that more nearly concerns ourselves. Pat's Lord Fancourt's hand lying on piano. Lord Fancourt pulls hand away and smacks Spedigue's hand. Spedigue goes right center, rubbing hand. No, we have not. Coming left center. You don't know me. I'm no ordinary woman. Spedigue coming center. Lucia, I beg of you to listen to me. I'll listen to you with pleasure. But where is the letter you promised me? Will you hear me, Lucia? Lord Fancourt, getting rather annoyed and bored. I'll hear you with pleasure. Going up center to write. But why won't you give me the letter? Spedigue crossing left. Lucia, do I deserve this? Lord Fancourt coming down right, aside to write. He deserves six months, the old idiot. Lucia, you are a puzzle, an enigma. Lord Fancourt, crossing to Spedigue, left center. How dare you! Until you give me the letter, all is over between us. Lucia, that decides me. I go to my room. Casually. A brief note. Lord Fancourt, pointedly. With full consent and signed, don't forget. Spedigue at left entrance. Then say you will be mine? I'll say anything you like. Only don't be too long in the study. Spedigue at door left, kissing hand. Darling! Exits left. Lord Fancourt, center. That's all right. With surprise and amusement. Facing audience. I say, what devils we women are. Goes up to window, center. It's too bad of those fellows. Going to piano, turns, leaning against it. Why? I shall be an old woman for the rest of my life. I haven't had a drink or a smoke all day. Catches sight of cigar box on table right, crossing quickly. By George, here's a find. Looking towards door left. I wonder how long he'll be. Ah, hanged if I don't chance it. Light cigar with match which he strikes on his boot. Comes down stage center. Puffs vigorously. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Puffs. Enter Donna Lucia with Ella right of her. Through left center window, from left. Donna Lucia sees Lord Fancourt smoking. Aside to Ella. Ah, oh, she's smoking. Aloud. <coughs> comes down left side of him. Ella comes down right of Lord Fancourt. He is startled. Draws in a large mouthful of smoke, then hides cigar in placket hole, holding lighted end reversed in palm of right hand, mouth full of smoke, looks from Donna Lucia to Ella, and then straight ahead in agony, holding smoke first in opposite cheek to each one he looks at, then in both cheeks, screwing up eyes, almost bursting. Ella, this must be spoken through ensuing laughter, or Lord Fancourt would burst, rapidly. Auntie, did you find it chilly? Oh, yes, my dear. I thought I'd get a wrap of some kind. I'll go upstairs and get you something. I know where your things are. Goes to door, turns, looks at Lord Fancourt, and exits right. Lord Fancourt looks after her, blows out smoke, and tries to wave it away. Are you alone? Lord Fancourt comes center. Yes, I'm all alone. And so sad. Oh, dear me. Sniffing smoke. Crosses down right. What a dreadful smell of smoke. Secretly much amused. <laughs> ah, yes, I notice it myself. Going quickly upstage, takes cigar out of placket hole, and unseen, changes it into left hand. I'll go and find out who it is. Donna Lucia going up right center. No. 
don't go. Lord Fancourt turns, holding cigar behind his back. I wanted to talk to you. Lord Fancourt, amiably. Yes? Comes down left centre, cigar behind back. About your late husband, Don Pedro. Oh, that will be nice. Do you know, when I met Don Pedro, he told me he had no wife. <laughs> oh, the wicked storyteller. Ah, but he was a cruel husband. The Don Pedro I knew was noble, kind, and gentle. That was his father, the old gentleman with the white moustache. Donna Lucia, aside, behind her fan, turning away. I never knew such effrontery. Returning centre, aloud. Do you know, Donna Lucia, I'm surprised you don't indulge in the habit of smoking. So many Brazilian ladies do, you know. Well, to tell you the truth, that's just what I was doing when you came in. Shows cigar in left hand. Then, pray, don't let me interrupt you. Lord Fancourt smokes. Aside. I shouldn't have been surprised at a pipe. Lord Fancourt stops smoking. C can I offer you one? Uh, no, thanks. Both turn, but Lord Fancourt kicks his skirt out of the way in turning. They go up center together. Donna Lucia fans herself with left hand. Lord Fancourt does the same with right hand. You see... Turning and taking his arm, both stop fanning, coming down center. Not being a Brazilian lady, it might be thought strange. Letting go his arm, Lord Fancourt, hopefully. Will you have a drink of any kind? No, thanks. Oh, Donna Lucia, pardon my curiosity, but have you any children? Lord Fancourt, taken off his guard, can't remember what he'd been told. Uh, uh, only a few. N none to speak of. Donna Lucia goes up right center. Lord Fancourt goes down left. Re-enter Ella, right, with wrap. Here's your wrap, auntie. Puts it on Donna Lucia's shoulders. Lord Fancourt puts cigar and coffee cup on piano. Thank you, dear. I am going into the garden. I fancy Sir Francis has something to say to me. Going up center. And as it's rather chilly... Turning at window. Perhaps you'd better stay in. Exit center to left. Lord Fancourt steals a look at Ella, about to exit. Goes slowly to window, left center. Ella, up center, coming down behind Ottoman, right center. Quickly, aside. Auntie said we weren't to hint about our knowing she's not auntie. I'm sure she's only doing it to oblige them. Turns, sees Lord Fancourt, about to exit window, left center. Going up center to Lord Fancourt. Aloud. Oh, don't go. Please. Lord Fancourt turns. I was going into the garden. Ella, right of Lord Fancourt. It has turned quite chilly. Auntie sent me in from the garden because of that. Lord Fancourt, concerned. Can I get you a wrap of any kind? Movement towards door, right. Ella, stopping Lord Fancourt. No, thank you. Auntie thinks I'm better here. I've been ill, you know. Oh, but I didn't know. Oh, I'm all right now, of course, if I take care. Lord Fancourt, seriously. Yes, you must take great care. Ella taking Lord Fancourt's right arm and going slowly down to Ottoman right center. Auntie, I fancy, is more particular than usual this evening. Helping Lord Fancourt to Ottoman puts cushion behind his back. For you know... Quick look to left. Years ago, she... And Sir Francis. Kneels left of Lord Fancourt. Were. Whispering. Sweethearts. Were they? But he went away without telling her he was ever and ever so fond of her. Auntie says he was shy. And he went away without knowing that she was ever and ever so fond of him. But the noblest man I ever knew was shy. And oh, so kind. With a look round. He got to know how Papa had become so ill and so poor. 
and lost a large sum of money to him at cards auntie thinks on purpose i often wondered why they played cards and papa so ill too but when i asked the doctor if it wasn't doing harm he said not the game that was being played a little pause but i've got all the money and if ever we meet i mean to give it back lord fancourt quietly oh no you must never think of doing that it would be like accusing him of a sort of cheating you know but it was so much enough auntie says to make me independent for life and do you think he'd take it back if he knew that ella simply oh but i should feel it my duty lord fancourt thankfully smiling kindly it's too late now but he went away before i had time to tell him how much i i in a low voice loved him for rising for his kindness to my poor father moves up center lord fancourt rises quietly and goes round right of ottoman up to right center ella turning to lord fancourt you don't mind my telling you all this do you i don't know why but i like to talk to you putting her hand on his arm i like you goes to window left center turning <sighs> and i do so long to see him again exit left center to left lord fancourt watches ella off then goes to ottoman down right and punches cushion twice vigorously after cushion business re-enter spedague with letter left lucia lord fancourt coming center have you got the letter spedague shows letter lord fancourt tries to snatch it spedague holds it out of his reach yes here is the letter but first make my happiness complete say that from this blissful moment we are engaged we are engaged lord fancourt gets the letter got it we are engaged going to door right darling lord fancourt turning mr spettigue call me stephen lord fancourt reading letter is this a letter stephen yes that is the letter and we are betrothed lord fancourt at door right we are betrothed darling quick exit right enter sir francis and donna lucia centre window from left spedague going up to centre opening shaking sir francis by both hands ah mrs beverly smith sir francis congratulate me congratulate me going up to right centre window sir francis looks puzzled donna lucia coming down right aside i knew it spedague in centre window turning i am the happiest man in the world but where are the dear children this must be a day of happiness and rejoicing for us all for us all exit centre to right sir francis coming down centre taking donna lucia's wrap off and placing it on back of ottoman what on earth does he mean what's all this excitement about donna lucia sits on ottoman right centre <laughs> can't you guess no didn't i tell you what would happen if we left them alone Huh? don't you understand she's accepted him what donna lucia dryly yes donna lucia d'alvadores sits on ottoman you don't mean that <laughs> i fancy he'll find out his mistake before long sir francis half aside by george what a fool i've been why are you sorry sir francis right centre no but that rascal of a boy of mine made some sort of a stupid suggestion that i should uh, that you should offer your hand and heart to donna lucia d'alvadores from brazil where the nuts come from when i think of what a fool i was might have been should have been then you don't envy him envy him coming to her right but think of her millions ah lucy when i saw your face <laughs> 
you didn't recognize it no but when i did but i told you all that in the garden just now and you'll be content for a while with a cottage and your old sweetheart and you you would take me a penniless widow nothing could make me happier donna lucia gives him her hand frank sir francis taking her hand lucy a little pause donna lucia smiles why what are you smiling at i was only thinking of of what of donna lucia d'alvadores enter ella left center window from left well she's a quaint little figure i must own goes up right center to right window ella coming down to donna lucia right auntie did you find the air chilly i didn't notice my love <laughs> auntie how pretty you look tonight with look to sir francis whispering has sir francis Shh. ella kisses donna lucia and sits on ottoman left of her sir francis comes down right and sits on chair below door right spedigue off come along my dear children entering come along enter spedigue right centre window followed by kitty and amy jack and charlie brasset enters door right carrying salver goes up right centre charlie up centre jack left of him spedigue coming down to front of sofa left centre kitty you sit there indicating piano stool amy dare stands right centre by ella i have something to tell you something you will all be very pleased to hear looking round but where is donna lucia general movement no one answers then brasset steps forward brasset in front of small table upright centre donna lucia's gone to her room i fancy steps back again ah perhaps it's just as well now before she returns i have a little secret to tell you all exchange glances a secret, a secret? oh really a secret oh really oh, a really? secret oh really what is it spedigue cutting in rather louder to gain attention i am sure you will pardon me if i ask your attention for a few moments charlie aside to jack quick and low good gracious jack what he's going to say how do i know till he said it situated as i am a lonely widower a mateless uncle surrounded with grave responsibilities my ward indicating kitty my niece indicating amy a good fairy has i may say tripped in among us bringing with her unexpected light and joy charlie aside rapidly to jack who does he mean shut up under her influence i have consented to the engagement of my niece to a gentleman in whose honour and probity i have the fullest confidence mr charles wycombe charlie goes to amy right centre and takes her hand charlie how sweet of your dear aunt furthermore charmed by irresistible spells i have consented to the union of my ward with john only son of my friend sir francis chesney jack goes to kitty spedigue pointing to carnation in his coat ah sir francis sir francis laughs but what will you say to a third engagement charlie returns centre to jack they look at him breathlessly a third a third a third what 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 our good fairy nay let me add without further metaphor rather pompously one whose name is honoured in the southwestern hemisphere as that of rothschild is in europe self-conscious and rather smug has consented to become mrs stephen spedigue kitty rises i allude to our dear friend donna lucia d'alvadores brasset right centre holding empty tray behind his back knocks it against table and it falls with a loud clatter on to the floor general movement of surprise everyone starts charlie joins jack up left centre leaving brasset in full view spedigue furious what is that brasset looking helplessly right and left and nervously shooting first one cuff and then the other 
Big pardon, sir. The tray, sir. Kitty pushes music stool under piano and goes to back of sofa. Spedigue shouting. Be more careful, Brasset. Brasset picks up tray. Amy coming forward, conciliatingly. Uncle. Spedigue more quietly. Be more careful. Resuming speech. Nothing could please me more than... Charlie breaking forward, wildly, coming down center to Spedigue. Mr. Spedigue, I can listen to this ghastly farrago no longer. Mr. Wycombe, sir, what do you mean? I say, sir, and I don't care what the result may be, I can listen to this ghastly... Spedigue, loftily, breaking in. I presume, sir, in espousing my niece... Charlie, wildly, cutting in. I can. I won't espouse her. Consternation and general excitement. Amy turns away, goes upright. Under this, false and lying pretenses. Donna Lucia smiles. That woman... Do you allude in such a manner to... I say that woman... I must beg of you to speak with more respect of your aunt. She is not my aunt. Donna Lucia rises, followed by Ella, and goes up center, watching the following scene from there. Sir Francis goes round back of Ottoman to top end of piano. Brasset goes to door right. Not your aunt? What do you mean? I love Amy far too sincerely to... Never mind that, sir. Explain your words. Jack coming forward. Uh, Mr. Spettigue, will you allow me to say that the blame is mine, and, and let me explain? I am addressing this person. To Charlie. Answer me, sir. Explain your words. Brasset at door. Aside. I must tell his lordship of this. Exit right. At the last moment this morning, my aunt, on whose account we have invited Miss Vidan and Miss Spettigue, telegraphed to say she couldn't come the ladies arrived and we jack helping charlie out and i sir prevailed upon another person to uh, well to personate her crossing right below ottoman i've been treacherously infamously deceived charlie crossing right centre to spedigue that was not our intention sir spedigue turning furious don't lie to me, sir. Charlie goes up right center to right of Amy, who turns away from him. He stands above door, right. Jack, trying to calm Spedigue. I beg your pardon, sir. You forget. You were not expected. Spedigue below door, right. A frump like that with a wig? Well, you can't blame her for that. Joins Kitty behind sofa down left. Lord Fancourt, off. May I come in? Anxious looks from Jack and Charlie to door right. Spedigue savagely. Turn that woman out of my house! Enter Lord Fancourt in evening dress right. General movement of surprise. Kitty goes to end of sofa. Lord Fancourt coming center. I say, may I come in? Turn that woman out of! Turning, sees Lord Fancourt. Breathlessly. Who are you, sir? Lord Fancourt, right center holding hands in front of him like an old lady. I'm Charlie's aunt from Brazil, where the nuts come from. Kitty goes to front of sofa. Jack going center, aside to Lord Fancourt. Fancourt, Babbley, you duffer! Goes above sofa left to Kitty. Lord Fancourt to Spedigue. Fancourt, Babbley, I beg your pardon. Ella, aside to Donna Lucia. Auntie! And I told him everything. They go out center window for a minute. Spedigue still furious. What does this mean, sir? Donna Lucia returns center, Ella by top end of piano. Lord Fancourt to Spedigue. It means that we've all done very wrong, and we're all extremely sorry, and tender you our humblest apologies. My apologies, I should say, for if I hadn't offered the temptation, the whole thing would never have occurred. Ella moves quietly down left to front of piano stool. And if Mr. Spettigue will allow us to add our apologies... 
and say we have no words to express our contrition. Spedigue raging. It's infamous, infamous. But where is the document obtained for me under these fraudulent pretenses? Oh, the letter. I have the letter. Produces it from inside breast pocket of dress coat. Kitty below sofa. It's mine, mine. Give it to me. Seeing Kitty's anxiety. Miss Verdon. To Lord Fancourt. Sir, I demand it. Coming forward to take it. Lord Fancourt holds up letter in left hand. Donna Lucia, down centre, interposing. Allow me. Takes letter. I shall dispute it. Under her father's will, I shall dispute it. This letter is addressed and has been delivered to Donna Lucia Dalvadores. But she... Catching Lord Fancourt's eye. I mean, he is not Donna Lucia Dalvadores. No, but I am. You. you? 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 Lucy. General movement of surprise and exclamation. Kitty sits on sofa. Donna Lucia joins Sir Francis up left center by piano. Charlie, tiny pause, quick gasp. My aunt. Said unconsciously, like the slang expression. You will pardon me if I retire. Goes below ottoman to door right, turning to Lord Fancourt. As for you, sir... I shall inquire from the authorities, your college, in the morning. Opens doors, about to exit. Stops. Takes out buttonhole and throws it center. Exits right. Lord Fancourt catches carnation and goes to door right. Lord Fancourt, turning, grabs Charlie's right arm. Charlie, can he have me up for breach of promise? Amy, up center, coming forward, indignantly to Charlie. Charlie! Stamping foot. Mr. Wickham, I mean, how dare you? I'll never forgive you. I'll never forgive any of you for treating Uncle Stephen like that. Turns to exit through window. Donna Lucia, center, stopping Amy, taking her hand. Be patient with us, my dear. Your uncle shall have the most profound reparation my influence can make. For my own part... To Sir Francis. I only shared in the deception when I found to lord fancourt another lady established in my place lord fancourt to charlie no wonder she knew all about my late husband donna lucia hands amy over to charlie all talk together well i'm as sorry as anyone but i'd trust jack with my life donna lucia coming down to left center indeed then he must wait till i'm his mother charlie and amy go down right Amy sits on ottoman. Charlie stands left of her. Jack, turning to Donna Lucia. Mother? Sir Francis, coming down center to right of Donna Lucia. Yes, Donna Lucia. In deceiving me as much as anybody, has, however, done me the honor to recollect an old affection, and has promised to assume that authority. So, look out, Jack. Sir Francis retires above piano. Jack sits on sofa right of Kitty. Ella moves down to top end of piano. Donna Lucia center to Lord Fancourt. Lord Fancourt Beverly. Lord Fancourt comes center to right of Donna Lucia. I am afraid you have gained one confidence that nothing could excuse. I know, and I reproach myself beyond expression. Looking at Ella. But I wouldn't part with the memory of that confidence to save my life. And if Miss Delahaye will allow me to say so, I am willing to atone for it with a lifelong devotion. Donna Lucia looks at Ella, then holds out left hand to her. Ella, smiling, puts hers in Donna Lucia's. Auntie! Donna Lucia hands her across to Lord Fancourt. Lord Fancourt takes Ella's left hand and tucks it in his arm, and as they turn to go up center, Lord Fancourt kicks the front of Charlie's leg with his instep as he passes. Charlie limps around behind Ottoman to right of Amy. Donna Lucia turning to Jack. Now, where is my son? Jack, rising. Here, yeah, Mama. I shall have to talk to you very seriously before I give you this. Shows letter. Jack sits again. Donna Lucia turning to Charlie, center. Charlie? 
I'll never forgive you if you deceive that sweet girl again. To Lord Fancourt. And as for you, sir. Orchestra starts to play curtain music very softly, as in Acts 1 and 2. Lord Fancourt coming down center, with Ella on his arm. Oh, no. Never again. I give you my word. I'll give you the clothes if you like. I've done with them. Miss Delahaye has consented to think me over as a husband, and in future I resign to Sir Francis Chesney. Sir Francis has come down between Donna Lucia and Piano during last speech. All claims to Charlie's aunt. Music swells to forte. Curtain. End of Act Three. End of Charlie's Aunt by Brandon Thomas.